Hi, this video is super late because the past two months have been very busy. Anyways, here is Pride Month Week 4. I will be discussing the two most interesting women in history, Julie Daubeny and Frida Kahlo. So first up is Julie Daubeny. She was French. I am likely saying her name wrong because I don't know any French. She was a bisexual opera singer and fencer. She was born in either 1673 or 1670, depending on your source. Her father was the guy who trained the pages for Louis XIV, and he taught her how to fence. As a teenager, she was married to a man named Sir de Malpin of Saint Germain en Laye. This made her married name Madame de Maupin, or La Maupin, which is how she is often referred to today. Anyway, I guess married life didn't suit her because soon afterward she ran away to Marseille with a man named Serrans. Along the way, they made their living through fencing performances and singing. It was around this time one of the most popular stories of her life occurred. So she fell in love with this merchant's daughter. The merchant didn't like it, so he sent a girl to a convent. I'm not sure why he thought the best way to keep her away from a woman was to surround her with women, but... Anyways, that backfired because Lama Pin joined the convent as well and then helped the girl fake her own death using the body of a recently deceased nun, put the body in the girl's bed, and set the whole building on fire. That was the first time Lama Pin had to get a pardon from the king. After getting to Marcel, she eventually made her way to Paris and joined the Paris Opera. She performed under the name Mademoiselle de Maupin. Even though she was married, Mademoiselle was just what singers used. A major event at this time was she was at a ball, she was flirting with this woman, and she kissed her, which upset the lady's suitors, who challenged her to a duel, and she accepted. Some of her say she killed them, some don't. Either way, dueling was illegal, so she had to get another pardon from the king. Despite the pardon, she still went to Brussels for a bit to just sort of lie low. She continued to perform opera in Brussels before eventually coming back to Paris and she retired in 1705 and in 1707 she died. Depending on the source, she was somewhere between the ages of 33 and 37. Next, I want to talk about Frida Kahlo. She was a famous Mexican artist. I am sure you have seen some of her paintings. Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo y Calderón was born July 6, 1907. When she was a child, she had polio. She recovered, but did leave one leg smaller than the other for the rest of her life. And then to make matters worse, when she was 18, she was in a horrific bus crash. The handrail went through her pelvis. It broke her pelvic bone, spine, right leg, and collarbone, and also pierced her uterus. And that was a main reason she suffered chronic pain the rest of her life and had to have 32 surgeries. While recovering, she was confined to bed for several months. This was the time when she really started painting. Her parents got her an easel and set up a mirror above her bed so she could paint herself. After recovering in 1928, she officially met the artist Diego Rivera. She showed him her art and he was impressed. Despite a 20 year age difference, they began a relationship, and they were married in 1929. Their marriage was tumultuous, to say the least. So at the time of the marriage, while he was 
technically unmarried. Diego did have two common-law wives. And throughout their marriage, both of them had multiple affairs. They were briefly divorced from 1939 to 1940. I would say the worst of his affairs was when he had an affair with her sister. But she also had several affairs. I'm not going to list everyone, but some famous examples include Leon Trotsky and possibly Josephine Baker. She definitely had a crush on George O'Keefe, but we don't know if it was reciprocated. And she was known to occasionally seduce one of Diego's girlfriends, such as Dolores Del Rio. In 1931, she and her husband went to America for a few years. For those who don't know, Diego Rivera was a muralist, so he basically had to go where the mural was to be painted. In 1934, they moved back to Mexico City into two conjoined houses. Hers was blue and his was pink and white. By the late 1930s, she was starting to gain international recognition for her paintings. In 1939, while divorced, she had one of her most productive periods. Then, in the 1940s, her health began to really decline. She still painted, but not as much as before. And in July of 1954, she became bedridden with bronchopneumonia. She died July 13, 1954, at the age 47. The official cause was a pulmonary embolism although some claim it was a purposeful overdose on pain medication. She is, of course, best known for her art, especially her self-portraits. She was known for dressing in traditional indigenous Mexican peasant clothing. She did this to emphasize her mestiza ancestry, and it was a symbol of her feminist and anti-colonialist ideals. Her life was very interesting, and this barely scratches the surface, so I do recommend looking up more information. Anyways, that is all I have time for today, so see ya!